your brain is just like a computer so make sure you are the only one programming it hello and welcome to this channel my name is sabi and i am excited to have you here today to watch this video so this video is all about the tcp deep dive series 2 and here we'll discuss about tcp headers and tcp encapsulation so the key takeaway for from this video will be tcp header will get to know the fields within the tcp header and tcp encapsulation so we'll be discussing about tcp header will explain each and every field with examples we'll see that how tcp encapsulates the data which is coming from an application layer you can think header like an envelope just like an envelope containing information such as the sender and the receiver address the postage information similar tcp contains such information as source and destination port and additionally just like an envelope it ensures that the letter will deliver to the correct address to the correct recipient similarly when we have data which is coming from application layer to the transport layer so the data got segmented and each segment will have bytes in it so once we have that each segment the data which is coming from the application layer break down into segments and then in the transport layer the segment will attach a header that header is basically a tcp header that we will have and in this tcp header we will have fields as a result those fields will have different functionalities based on that we have the entire functionality that is being built for tcp also your tcp header ensure that packet are sent to the correct services and correct order to ensure reliable data transfer So as per this TCP header we have different fields these fields starting with source port destination port sequence number acknowledgement number header length four bytes are reserved then we have CWR which is congestion window reduce ECN bit which is explicit congestion notification we have urgent flag we have acknowledgement flag we have syn flag we have reset flag we have fin flag and we have push flag so there are eight flags in tcp header we have and then we will have something called as window size tcp checksum we will have urgent pointers and we will have an option field as well so by default if we don't have the option field minimum of tcp header is 20 bytes and if we will have option fields then it depends and based on that it can maximum up goes up to 60 bytes we will see that in detail in the further sessions let's start about the tcp header for the first two fields that is uh, source port and destination port like in network layer we have ip address similar in the transport layer we have port numbers think like this is a street and in this street basically generally we will have different different buildings so let's say this is building 1 this is building 2 this is building 3 this is building 4 this is 5 6 and 7 so when we have different different buildings in a street what this building will refer to as in our case we can say that these this is my ip address so these buildings 1 2 3 is my ip address within this buildings we have what we have different apartments different floors with different apartments and those apartments what will have they will have their own numbers so let's say this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 so building 2 and then inside building 2 we will have apartment number 1 2 3 4 5 6 like that just like multiple apartments that we have similarly we will have multiple network devices how we will identify those network devices we will identify those network devices based on ip address for example 
this is a network device this is a server and based on this server i will have an ip address so it will identify the location to reach this server but inside this server i will have different different services in this for example dns server http server dhcp server just like multiple buildings that we have and inside buildings we will have multiple apartments right similarly when we have multiple devices how we will identify those devices we will able to identify those devices based on ip address for example we have a server and we know that the servers will host multiple different different services based on this ip address we will able to reach till the server but how we will able to reach if it is a dns right and if it is an ftp server if it is a http server if it is a https server right how we will able to access this services inside the server so that is what based on the port number so the combination of an ip address and a port number is like you are we are going to a specific device and we are accessing a specific service to it just like you are going to a building and in that building you are going to an apartment so we have something called as source port and we have something called as destination port in our header field we know that whenever an operating system is there in an operating system you you open a web browser and in that web browser when you open that this operating system generates a random port number so what is that random port number that random port number is source right and whenever you are open a web browser for any www. let's say facebook.com right in that what will happen is then application we have a protocol with that protocol what it is https or http so when it is http or https it will able to get the destination port number so we will have what destination port number and the source port number which been and the source port number which has been generated by the operating system which is random then it will come to where it will come to the network layer the network layer will identify which location this device is what is the location address to this device so from there we will have what we will have a source ip which is given by this pc we will have a destination ip so what is the destination and source ip source ip will be the local to this pc destination ip will be the remote and where you are accessing the facebook.com so the combination of ip address and port number where in your session layer it will maintain that particular session and it creates a socket right from a source port perspective why we are using a random port from which which range to which range we will use it so starting from 0 to 1023 all is well known port number well known port number is for example http is using 443 http it is it use port number 80 right similarly dhcp use dns it's use ftp use ssh will use so these are from where these are all from the well known port numbers then we will have something called as 1024 to 49151 this is a range which is been registered by i can this is a range which assigned to i can register ports from 49152 to 65535 port numbers these port numbers are basically dynamic port numbers from this dynamic port numbers range we generally your client is been used those ports right so source port is coming from this range of it the destination port as application identify which protocol it is so based on this application you will have a certain port port numbers from there you will get that port number from the well known port range and you will have a destination port of it so each source port and destination port in the header is what 16 bits 
So 2 to the power of 16, what we will have 0, 2, 6, 5, 5, 3, 5 total values with the with each field like source port will have 0, 2, 6, 5, 5, 3, 5. Your destination port, which is your 16 bits, which is also 0, 2, 6, 5, 5, 3, 5 port. Now. So whenever a client process wants to communicate with the server, it create a socket based on this socket, it will have a source port randomly created. Destination port has been given by the application. It will connect to the service, right? Based on the IP address to find the where the server is and then based on that, it will find the HTTP service in that particular server port number 80. So in this process, basically we will have 52222 is the source port, destination port is 80. Whenever a server wants to connect to a client, so what it will use now, the flow will be, the source port is what 80, the destination port will be 52222. So based on this, we will able to reach to the client port number 5222 based on that particular web service that has been opened from that client. So the combination of IP address and the port called as sockets, and based on the socket pairs, it uniquely identify each TCP connections in the internet. The socket pair will have four tuples, consist of client IP address, port number, server IP address, and server port, service port number of that server. The source port and the destination port is 16 bits, two to the power of 16, zero to six, five, five, three, five number of ports we will have. 021023 is a well-known port which is used by the protocols here. 10242491151 is a registered port assigned by ICANN. 49152265535 source port and destination port is 16 bits each. But you see that sequence number and acknowledgement number are 32 bits. So we have sequence number and we have acknowledgement number. We'll see that what is sequence number is, and we'll also see that what is for acknowledgement number. So after source port and destination port, what we have is a sequence number field. So what is sequence number? So in order to understand a sequence number, so we can compare a sequence number with a serial number of the products, right? that factory is producing. So this product will have a serial number and that is unique to this product. And this product will have a unique, so whatever the this factory is manufacturing, every product will have a different serial number. And that serial number is what? Unique. So that they will identify their inventory. Similarly, whenever from an application perspective, we are receiving data stream. And based on this data stream, your transport layer, TCP, what it does, it is doing what? It is doing breaking that data into segments. And based on this segments, each segment is what will have, will have bytes in it. So how TCP will calculate those bytes, that is based on the sequence number. Similarly, in case of computer networks when an application layer sends data and that data was being divided in what? That data divides in segments. This segment is what transported over the network to the receiver end. And based on this segment, each segment will have assigned sequence number to it. For example, this segment is 1460 bytes. So because each segment will have what? Each segment will have bytes in it. For example, this is segment one having a one to 1460 bytes. So sequence number generally represent each byte of it. So sequence number will keep track of each byte which has been sent over the network to the receiver. So the sequence number is what compared to this example. So sequence number is equals to our serial number of it. 
So sequence number can be compared with a serial number, which helps to identify to keep track of individual components in a large process in the system. Similarly, sequence number is used to track each bytes which has been sent from each direction. As we know that TCP is a what? TCP is a full duplex. So TCP works in the full duplex. So this end also sends the data from computer to the server also will also send the data. So based on this, you will have what bi-directional way of sending data. So next field in TCP header is acknowledgement number. So acknowledgement number can be compared to a signature on a delivery receipt. Just like when a delivery person asks for a signature to confirm that the package has been what received. Similarly, whenever you are sending data, bytes of data over the wire and it being received at the receiving end, similar to the signature, the receiver will send an acknowledgement that I received one to 14, 60 bytes of data and so I'm acknowledging that. So the acknowledgement message in the header that we have, it will contain an acknowledgement number, which indicates to the sender that a particular segment of bytes has been successfully received at the receiver side. And this also allow from the sender perspective to send the next segment in the sequence. So the sequence number and acknowledgement number, the next field after source port and destination port is. So the sequence number, each byte has a sequence number. Sequence number field contains the sequence number of the first byte in the segment. Whenever we send data from sender to receiver, the receiver will receive those data. How the sender will come to know that these many bytes has been received. So where there is what the acknowledgement number carry the information about the flow of the direction. So it carries the sequence number of the next data bytes a host is expecting. Unless it is specified, acknowledgement number is a cumulative as well. We'll see that what is acknowledgement number cumulative in our next video when you go, go deep dive into each fields. So application layer, we will getting a stream of data and that stream of data being converted into segments. Each segments will have bytes in it. Each bytes will assign a sequence number to it. Starting from 201 to 251 for a 50 byte data packet, right? So whenever a sender sends that 50 byte of data packet, whenever the receiver receives that, each data packet that has been received so the data packet which has been received, sequence number is what? 251. So an acknowledgement number being sent from receiver to the sender with 251 from the sequence plus one, which is 252. As a result, this will help sender to expect that the acknowledgement number also should be 252 so that I can start the next sequence number from 252 itself. So in this example, see that a blue arrow with from sender to receiver, one direction of it, sending a sequence number one, and the acknowledgement number from the previous flow, it is 111, let's say. And the data has been sent 517, right? So now, a sequence number of 111, acknowledgement number of 518 has been sent from the receiver to the sender. What that means? That means the sender send a sequence number of one starting from the first byte. Along with that, it sends a data of 517. 517 bytes of data has been sent. So now, based on that, how the sender will come to know that all the 517 bytes has been received? it will find based on the acknowledgement number, which is coming as 517 plus one, which is 518. So what is the next sequence number that 
the sender will send to the receiver again. So the next sequence number it will send whatever the acknowledgement number it received from the previous packets. So based on this 518, the sender will send the sequence number as 518 and the data it is sending for let's say zero bytes or it can send thousand bytes, right? So based on that, if thousand byte has been received here, so it will expect that how this thousand byte has been received through an acknowledgement number. Similar to this flow, this is one flow because this is a full duplex. So we have one direction flow, blue one. The gray part of it is another direction of flow from the receiver to the sender side of it. Sequence number starting from 111 and it's sending a data byte of 14, 12 data bytes. It sends a sequence number of 15, 23 plus 14, 12 of data. How it will come to know it's 14, 12 because now it, what it does is it is doing a cumulative AC with 3644 data has been received. If you calculate 1412 plus 1412 plus 709, it will come to 3644 bytes plus one. So the acknowledgement number is what? 3644 from this side of it. So sequence number field contains the sequence number of the first byte in the segment and then it sends the data as for the example first byte first one first byte of it and then it sends the data of 1580 1517 it sends again 1518 the first byte of that packet and then it's sending 80 byte of data so sequence number field contains the sequence number of the first bytes in the segment acknowledgement number field is going to carry the sequence number of the next bytes that the host is expecting. So 518, which is what the host is expecting that and based on this, it is sending the sequence number as 518. Whenever you open a Wireshark, you will able to see this tick mark in for 247 serial number of the Wireshark, right? So 247 with a tick mark is an ACK packet of 251. So we discuss about the source port, destination port, sequence number, acknowledgement number. Now the next one is what? Next one is the header length. So what is this header length? We already discussed that. If we don't have the option field in TCP, the TCP header is 20 bytes. So minimum of 20 bytes of TCP header will remain there every time. So how the calculation is? So TCP header field is four bytes. For example, if the binary value of the header field is one zero zero zero. So the binary value of 1000 is what? Eight. So minimum size of a TCP header is 20 bytes. We can scale up to four multiples of it. So which gives us a result of 1111, which will be what? 15 into 4, which is 60 bytes. So maximum a TCP header can be 60 bytes. Minimum of TCP header is what? 20 bytes. So the next to the header, we have some flags. Total number of eight flags are there. So we first will start with this SYN flag. So which is called as synchronization flag. So this flag is being used to initiate a connection between two hosts. So in our TCP three-way handshake, so whenever the two ends wants to communicate with each other, as TCP is a connection oriented protocol, they initiate the connections. So based on this connection, they will send what? They will send SYN. So each end will send its own synchronization flag, that is SYN flag. So it should be set only in the first segment of both the sender and the receiver. So during the connection establishment phase, only that this SYN flag been used. The first segment from each end of the SYN flag, basically it synchronized the sequence number to initiate a TCP connection. 
And here what we may also mention in this slide is the fin flag, just like a sin flag occupied one byte in this sequence number space. So the advertised window appear to be one byte smaller because TCP allows room for the one byte of sequence number space, which has been occupied by the fin flag. So the next is acknowledgement flag, the ACK flag. So when the ACK flag is set, the receiver indicates that it has received the segment of data successfully. And this will help to the sender to know that all the bytes has been received. So this helps to ensure reliability of the transmission and allows for any lost packet or corrupted packets to be retransmitted. So except the first segment of TCP, which is the SYN segment, Almost every segment we will able to find the ACK flag. But there are few exception in which we will not be able to find the ACK flag is sometimes in some corner situation we will have in reset, we will not be able to see the ACK flag. Also the ACK segment contains the next expected sequence number from the sender, which indicates that how much data has been received and processed by the receiver. So ACK segment can also include other options such as window size, whenever you want to reduce or increase the window size, you will send in with an ACK, you will send that information. You will have used that in congestion control, you will use that in selective acknowledgement. So this informs sender about the status, or status and capacity of the receiver. Sending an ACK cost nothing because 32-bit acknowledgement number field is always be the part of TCP header. So as in ACK flag. So therefore, we will see that once connection has been established, this field is always been set. So in every TCP segment, you will find the acknowledgement number. This is printed only if the ACK flag in the header is there. So in just remember the first segment, which is the SYN flag, whenever they want to initiate, whenever sender wants to initiate to the receiver end, so that time we don't have this flag remaining maximum all the times ACK flag will be there. So whenever the stream of data which is coming from the application layer, the transport layer wait for some time for the application to send enough data which is equals to the maximum segment size so that the number of packet transmitted on the network minimize, right? which is basically not desirable for any kind of interactive applications whenever you are doing any kind of telnet, SSH and so on, right? Similarly, the transport layer at the receiver end also buffers that for any interactive application or you can say telnets, SSH, for which we need to send data immediately, we need to use push flag. So the push bit on and it immediately send the segment to the network layer as soon as it's received the signal from the application layer. So at the receiver side of it will also happen the same thing. Whenever we send something from the application side of it at the receiver side, upon seeing the push bit on, it immediately forward the data to the application layer without waiting that in the receive buffer. So in simple terms, receiver process the segment as they receives it instead of buffering it. So how we will able to correlate with a real time situation? So in order to understand the push flag, let's say we are driving in a busy road, right? Like this. And you see the ambulance with a siren and a light flashing, trying to make a way through the traffic. Normally the cars stay in their lane and wait for the ambulance to pass by. So whenever an application sends data, in the transport layer will have something called a send buffer. It will send the packet only when you will have a segment which has been there for M equals to MSS. So any important packet which is coming, any interactive or telnet you are doing it, it will, it will come. A push bit will be on to this. It will not wait in the send buffer as well. While receiver side as well, at the receiver at the receiving end, in the buffer it will not wait because of the push bit on and then you will be able to see that it is processed by transport layer towards the application layer. So in this, if you will see some of the Wireshark captures, you will see some packets 
is length is 1460 in TCP. Some will be 15, 50, some will be 550, some will be 46, some will be 400. So like this, the length will be. And you will observe that in this 550, 14, 46, 400, these packets will always be with push flag on. So what it does, it is not waiting for the MSS. It is not waiting to create the size of the MSS. It is directly sending whatever the data is, it will send it. So next flag, we'll discuss about fin. So like sin flag, what we'll do, we'll synchronize the sequence number to initiate the TCP connection. Similarly, with fin flag, it indicates that the end of data transmission to finish the TCP connection. So like sin flag, it synchronizes the sequence number to initiate the TCP connection. Similarly, fin flag indicates the end of data transmission and then finish the TCP connection. Generally, fin flag is being used to terminate the connection in an orderly manner. So whenever in a normal case, the connection has been terminated. So fin flag is refer to that as a orderly release. So why it is called as orderly release? Because the queued data has been sent and no data loss has been there in the connection. So terminate the connection. If you see that segment 164 complete the data transfer from the client and then finally data segments also carry the fin segment. Segment 165 contains the ACK number of segment 164 to ACK the fin sent. So whenever a client server ends the transmission of data and ensure that there is no data loss, so they will do a orderly release. And that is being done from the client will send a fin, the server will send a fin, both will do a act to it. So fin act, fin act, both will do it. So the next one is reset flag. So reset flag sets the connection tear down very fast. That means it is aborting the connection. While aborting the connection, what will happen? Any queued data is being there it will be reset and the data data loss will be happening. So the receiver of the reset can tell the other end that the connection has been aborted instead of normal close. So you can say that two ends will be there. For example, one router got rebooted or your system got rebooted. So there will be what? There will be a reset will be there. So you initiating a BGP session where BGP is not configured. So as a result, what will happen? You will have a connection refused. The port number is not there because BGP is not configured. So as a result, you will get a reset. So that is what called as abort the connection because I don't have anything. So the next flag we'll discuss about is urgent flag. Technically, the urgent flag is rarely used in the modern TCP implementation. But theoretically, we can say that when an application mark data as urgent by specifying a special options from the application layer, the sender side transport layer, the TCP will receive that. Once it received, it will write, do a write request to enter into a special state called as urgent mode. Upon entering the urgent mode, it records the last byte of the application specified in the urgent data. This is being used to set the urgent pointer field in a subsequent, as a result, the receiver can use the pointer to separate the urgent data from the normal data and then prioritize its delivery to the application. Only one urgent pointer is maintained per TCP connection. So next field after flag is what window size. So window size is what 16 bits field. Two to the power of 16 is what 65536 starting from zero to 65535. So we will have total window size in a header is 65535. So window field specifies how many bytes the receiver is willing to receive. 
what is the receiver receive window capacity so generally the window negotiation happened that what is my window side size what is my receive window size what is the sender receive window size so this is has been done during the tcp three way handshake along with the option field that is window scale so it will window scale will help to multiply the number whatever the number is there in the window size we'll see that in the subsequent videos when we go through the tcp congestion control the receiver can tell the sender that it would like to receive more data than what it is that means it will in, it it wants to increase the window size for example the receiver window size is less so what how it will able to identify the how the sender will able to identify that so the receiver will send of its own window size based on what he is able to receive it so it does by specifying the number of bytes beyond the sequence number in the acknowledgement field to specify that this is my receive window is so how we can understand the window size imagine that the sender is a faucet and the receiver is a container the faucet can only pour certain amount of water into the container before it needs to have a confirmation from the container whether it is full or it is half full or it needs some more water right similarly window size represent the amount of water the faucet is pouring before having to wait for the confirmation from the receiver side telling that okay i am full now S send me less water so what i can do i will start reduce my send rate i'll send in drops of water so if the window size is small the faucet can pour only few drops of water at a time however if the window size is large the faucet can pour more water at a time so it will what it does not need to wait for the confirmation and then it will water start flowing inside the container so this is what you can correlate the window sizes we have a sender we have a receiver so sender what it sends data so you can think about about a sender is what sending the water receiver capacity is what a container that is there so a container can be 1 liter a container can be 100 liter so based on that how much data you need this is what called as receive window that a receiver will have and once it gets fulled then it, then receiver will inform that i i i all the data has been fulled the buffer has been fulled reduce the send rate now let's say it get empty right the buffer there is more space only this part of the container got full in that case receiver will again send that i am increasing the receive window send more data similar in case of water what is water in this case and why it is to a drops of water based on that windowing is a mechanism to control the flow of data so that the receiver does not fall behind so window what we means is the maximum amount of data that can be sent before an acknowledgement has been received for example in this case we will have a receiver and a sender so the receiver sends the window size it inform the sender the window size is two data segments so what it does it sends two data segment once it act the third segment right once it act so the receiver what it does is it sending sending the act for first and two segment and saying that window size is now three segment so it is increasing the window size so sender will send what sender will send three segments now and then receiver will act this three segments and then say that window size is what three segment i need three more segments so again sender will send three more segments next header is tcp checksum imagine data being transmitted is like the amount of money been paid by a customer so here the tcp checksum is like a cashier counting the change to ensure it is correct just like how the cashier checks the change to ensure that the customer has received the correct amount tcp checksum also do the same 
it use an algorithm to verify that data being transmitted and which has been corrupted or altered in any way during the transmission. So when sender creates the segment of data, it calculates the checksum value based on the data being sent. The receiver also calculate the checksum. It means that data has been transmitted correctly without any kind of error. So however, if the checksum do not match, it indicates that the data has been corrupted during the transmission and it will be retransmission again. So it will calculate the TCP header data and the pseudo header. So pseudo header is stands for your source destination protocol IP header and the TCP segment. So this is all about TCP checksum options. We will discuss in our next class, which all options are there and what is the practical use of the options. So we discuss about what we discuss about the source port and the destination port, which is 16 bits, sequence number and acknowledgement number, which is 32 bits. We have four bits of header length. We have one bit each of flags. We have window size of 16 bits. We have TCP checksum of 16 bits. We have urgent pointer, which is also 16 bits. So this makes the TCP header of 20 byte fixed, the basic header of TCP, which is 20 bytes. Then we'll have what options? Thank you so much for watching this video. So please share your feedback and questions in the comment box. I'll get back to you. And if you like, please subscribe and share the video. Thank you.